There are four seasons in every year, but today we are Falling for leaves. This is the planet Earth. This is what we live on. Of course, this isn't the real planet Earth. It's up in space. This is just a model. But our planet floating in space looks like this from far away. It gives us an idea of what we live on. It helps us to understand things. So when we are in space, the Earth is moving all the time. Our home is moving all the time. It's just so big we don't feel it. It's going around and back and forth. As it go around, goes around, we get day and night. As it goes back and forth, sometimes it's closer to the sun and sometimes it's further away. When it's close to the sun, we get spring and summer. And when we're further from the sun, we get fall and winter. So cool, right? The four seasons. You know, there are lots of different signs that the seasons are changing. One of them is to look how people are dressed. For example, in the spring and summer when people are warm, they tend to wear shorts and sandals and maybe some tank tops. And then when fall and winter come around, they like to cozy up with a warm sweater and jacket and hat and mittens. Another way to tell that the seasons are changing are by different activities people are doing. In the winter, you might see people out sledding or ice skating. And people often tend to sp spend more time inside in the winter when it's cold. Maybe watching TV or playing games or reading books. Then when spring comes, they're ready to be outside. So you might see people out going for walks and looking at the trees and the leaves budding and watching all the new baby animals being born. And then when summer comes, children usually have off school. So that's when families like to go on vacations and maybe have picnics outside, go to the park and enjoy the outside summertime. And then when fall finally comes around and children go back to school, you'll see backpacks and you'll see school buses and you'll see people going apple picking and carving pumpkins on the front porch. However, one of the best ways to tell that a season is changing is by looking at the trees. The trees change every season and it's a great way to know what's going on with the weather. The first season of every year is winter. In winter, the trees go dormant or they go to sleep. And when they are dormant or sleeping, it is hard for them to produce food to feed the tender leaves. They are cold just like we are. So they rest and they get ready for a new spring. When we look up and see the trees with no leaves on them at all, we know that it's season number one winter. As that earth starts to tilt closer to the sun, we start to warm up and it's almost like magic that everything starts to come to life outside. When you walk around or look out your window, you might see a lot of green buds on the trees. Then you know it's season number two, spring. The third season is our hottest season. It's when that tree really gets to produce food and feed the leaves. And even a lot of trees will make flowers too. There's lots of color, lots of leaves, lots of green. Everything is alive and loving the warmth and the heat from that sun. That makes season number three, summer. So we made it to the last season. The season where that earth starts to tilt away from that sun a little bit and we start to get chillier and chillier a time when those trees stop making so much food for the leaves and they get ready to go dormant or to sleep. So what happens is when they stop feeding their leaves, the beautiful, bright, alive green color goes away and the leaves reveal a secret underneath, another color that they're hiding from us in the summertime. This season is called fall, the fourth and final season. Now that we learn all four, let's see if you can say them all with me at home the four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. I'm Miss Tara, I'm a teacher for WQLN and I am so happy you joined us today as we learn more about falling for leaves. Into the leaf pile, 
Leaves of yellow, leaves of red, leaves changing overhead. Wind catching, wind blowing, leaves falling like it's snowing. Colors swirl round and round, autumn leaves on the ground. Leaves raked up in a pile, running leap, monkey smile. Hooray, my friend Abby's here today, yay! Hi. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. How was school? Good. Good? Did you learn anything new? Yeah, I learned a lot of things. Did you? Tell me something. Uh, reading and spelling. Ah, two of my favorite subjects. Well, our friends at home and I are talking about the four seasons and mostly about the season of fall, which is coming, right? So I hope you know so they can share with them some of the colors in the fall leaves. Can you do that for everybody? Sure. This is yellow, orange, and red. Yay! We'll see those colors on the leaves pretty soon, won't we? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I thought it'd be fun if we made a bookmark. Our theme is Falling for Leaves, and then we can use them. What do we use bookmarks for? For books, and in, in you're stopping, you put them in, so yeah. you know where you're reading. Oh, perfect. So sometimes you get interrupted, right? Yeah. Or you don't have time to finish. So these can come in handy, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's make one. And we'll use our three colors, red, yellow, and orange. Okay, so you can probably write falling for leaves, or you could just write fall, or whatever you want. So go ahead and pick a color. And um, I have all kind of art supplies here for us. Crayons, and markers, and glue, and stapler, and scissors. I'm gonna pick red. Okay, now I've already done a yellow one, I mean white one, so I think I'm gonna do yellow. Yay! All right, so um, do you want to write first or get your leaves on first? I write first. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to make my leaves first. I'm hmm. going to do blue. Okay, and I'm just going to make them out of paper. You can make them or like I did, I had these from a craft store. So you could do whatever it is that you have around. I like to do crafts at home, do you? Yep. And I like to do them with things that I already have too. So I'm going to use a little bit of glue and put it on my bookmark to stick them on. And, ooh, that's nice. Nice handwriting. Okay, I think I'll use some orange now. So are you happy to see your friends in school? Yes. Oh, that's always so I fun. said fall is fun. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. Okay, now do you want to make your leaves or do you want to put some on with this? Put some on. Oh. And could I put two on? Absolutely. That's fun. When you're I'm creative. I'm going to put one right here and right here. I love it. Okay, now do you need help with the stapler? Probably. That's okay. That's what's nice about doing crafts with somebody else, right? You can help each other. I'm probably going to do this. Is that how you want them set up? You have to be careful with the stapler too, right? That you don't get hurt. So it's always good this. to have a grown up help you out. Just like that? Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll just put one right in the middle there and hold them both. What do you think? Probably. Okay. So you don't have to put two. Do you like that? Yeah. Okay, do you want to hold that up for everybody at home? Oh, that looks great, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, and then I made four leaves, so I think I'm just gonna spell F-A-L-L. -L. I can put one letter on each. I think I'll use a black so it shows up. F. Because if you do red, it won't show up on red. You got it. Uh, orange. Okay, so this one says fall. Boy, they're all fun, aren't they? Yay. Okay, and we've already been using bookmarks, right? When we read, we've been reading this chapter book together, haven't we? Yeah. It's so good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we don't have time to finish it because it's long. So like Abby said, we put those bookmarks in, we're good to go. How about if we give one of these to Audrey? Your friend Audrey's coming next. Do you want to pick one out? I'll give it to her. Um, Any one this you want. one. You want to give her the one you made? Yes. Oh, that's so sweet. That's what friends, friendship's all about, right? Okay. Hey, thank you so much. Welcome. All right. See you next time. Now I feel like... <whistles> like I'm falling for leaves. Hey, Audrey, I made you a bookmark. Oh, thank you. Fall is fun. See you tomorrow at school. You too. Bye. Bye. Let me share a story with you. It's called Autumn's Leaves Are Falling. Leaves are falling down, down, down. Leaves are falling on the town.
Leaves are falling on my hat. Leaves are falling on my cat. Leaves are piling up, up, up. Leaves are covering up my pup. Leaves are covering up my feet. Leaves are covering up my street. We are jumping, we are leaping. We are hiding, we are creeping. We are crunching, we are stomping. We are rolling, we are rumping. Okay, okay, we had our fun. Now grab a rake, everyone. We rake, 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 and in a while, the leaves are all in one big pile. Oh, let's jump on last, one last time, and then we rake up all the leaves again. Autumn leaves have gone away. They'll be back another day. Bye. And that story made me feel like. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm falling for leaves. Hey, Audrey, thanks for stopping by and reading a story for us. No problem. I love to read. Me too. Happy, Happy fall. fall. You know, making crafts with my friends and reading with my friends and especially being silly with my friends are some of my very favorite fun things to do. So today I thought I would show you how to make another craft that would bring those three fall colors into your home that Abby told us about, red, yellow, and orange. So I gathered a lot of things from around the house. Let me show you what I bought. And then I came into actually the bathroom. I do the crafts a lot in the bathroom and the kitchen because there's a sink. And when you do crafts, sometimes you get messy. So it's always nice to be by a source of water. So let me show you what I gathered. So I got some paper plates to, to use to protect the surface. And I got some tissue paper here. And I just got this at the thrift store and different colors. I got the red, yellow, and orange for fall. And then I have some Mod Podge. Now Mod Podge is just simply watered down glue. So if you don't have Mod Podge from the craft store, you can make your own. You can put white glue in there and add, mix a little bit of water and you'll have Mod Podge. So I just happen to have some of that. And then I collected some different jars from my kitchen. When we finished things up, I think this was a pickle jar and this one had peppers in it and then i had a little mustard jar so you can use any size jar that you want and all the only other thing you need is a little sponge and i happen to have a sponge paintbrush but you can just use a little tip of a sponge and make your own you don't have to have this kind talk about easy right so i'm going to show you today how to make a fall luminary oh what a fancy word i love to say fancy words luminary can you say it at home luminary Ooh, that was good. Okay, so a luminary is something simply that glows from within. Okay, so it's gonna glow from the inside out. And once we get all this tissue paper onto the outside of the jar, and we put a little candle or tea light in there, oh my goodness, it will, it will just bright up, it will brighten up everything with that red, yellow, and orange, the colors of fall. So let me show you how to get started. And you definitely will need a grown up for this because there's gonna be a lot of glue and a lot of mess. So I recommend getting a grown-up to help you with this one and being patient. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the big jar, the biggest one, because I want to make a really big luminary, okay? So what you're going to do, and maybe how you can help your grown-up is by being very patient. You can even use a teeny little toothpick if you want. You're going to put dots of glue. So I went ahead and cut my tissue paper up into little squares, but you can even tear it up. You don't have to cut it up if you don't have a scissors. 
So you're gonna clean your um, jar real nice and clean. Make sure every, all the food particles are out of it. And then you're good to go, and nice and dry. So you're gonna apply a little bit of glue into each spot. And um, have your grown-up just put some dots on there for you to start. Now this dries really quick, so you can't do the whole jar once. You have to do little pieces. And then you can just pick any colors you want. And you can make a pattern of rose, or you can do like, I'll do red, orange, red. I'm gonna do stripes, but you don't have to do it that way. You can make it random too. All right, so I'm gonna do, and then just like this, all the way around. And then I'm gonna put a yellow down here. Put another orange there, and another, and I'll put a yellow one down there. So I'll put another orange one on there. And then I'm gonna add a yellow one down here. So see, I'm just gonna have some stripes of the red, the orange, and the yellow. And I'll be going all the way around. So, you know, this is kind of a neat project too because if you get part way through and then you get distracted, maybe you have to go somewhere or you ran out of time, or maybe you're just tired of doing it, you can put the lid back on and put this in a safe spot and then you can come back to it and work on it later. So that's kind of neat when you can do a craft that way, right? So you're just gonna continue to put these on. And then when you're all done, I would let the grown-up do the next part. So once you get them all attached, your grown-up is going to take a sponge. And if you're a little bit older, you can probably do this on your own if you're very patient and careful. And you're gonna apply the Mod Podge over the whole top. You kind of have to tap it on because tissue paper is very delicate. So you just wanna tap it on there and it gets quite messy, see? But it's well worth it when it's done. So you're gonna actually cover the whole tissue paper with that Mod Podge. See, it's gonna be completely covered. And you can do this in little sections at a time. You can let it dry, you come back and do another section so that you can hold on. And you're gonna do this for the whole jar. Isn't that so cool? All right, so I have one, I have a cloth here, so I'm gonna wipe off. And I'm gonna work on this a little bit more. And then when I get one all the way finished, I'll show you, okay? Wow, did I have fun. I just couldn't stop making these beautiful crafts. I used up all my supplies, and I think I'll give these extra to my family and friends. But I think I'll keep this one for myself. These are so beautiful, and it's a great way to bring the colors of fall into your house. Red, yellow, and orange. You know, if you want directions on how to make these luminaries, just go to wqln.org slash homeroom. And this particular craft is called Ready, Set, Glow. Because remember, luminaries glow from the inside out. All of you at home are luminaries too. Because when you let that beauty inside of you glow out, you become a luminary just like these. You know, these luminaries show up best at night. So I think we may have to check back in here when it gets dark later. And I'll show you what they look like when it's dark out. You know, as beautiful as leaves are in the fall, they can also be very messy. So my friend Jake's gonna stop by and show you how you can help at home and clean up the leaves. I like to help my family by raking leaves. Raking all those leaves made me feel like woo, woo, woo. Like I'm falling for leaves. Jake had fun being silly with the leaves too. But the part he wasn't being silly about was he really is a good helper at home. You know, it's really nice to do things around your house for people that you love. It makes them feel very special and it makes you feel good inside too. Well, all that raking made me think of this great book called The Big Leaf Piled. And you probably know this guy, the star, Clifford. Hope you like it. Clifford, the big red dog, the big leaf pile. It was a beautiful fall day on Birdwell Island. Cleo, Clifford, and T-Bone were making leaf piles. Cleo finished her pile of leaves. They were red, yellow, orange, golden brown. She counted one, two, three, and jumped in. 
Clifford finished his pile of leaves. They were red, yellow, orange, gold, and brown. He counted one, two, three, and jumped in. T-Bone's pile was not finished yet. T-Bone's pile had only brown leaves. Brown leaves make a nice, loud sound. I need more leaves, T-Bone said. I will help, said Clifford. I will help too, said Cleo, and they did. T-Bone's pile of leaves was ready, but T-Bone had to go home. It was time for him to go for a walk. I will watch your leaves, said Clifford. They will be safe with me, I promise. You are a good friend, said T-Bone, and happy T-Bone trotted off. Clifford watched the pile of leaves. He watched and watched some more. This is a very nice leaf pile, he said. I can't wait to hear its loud sound. I'm going to put my bookmark in there for one minute to keep my spot while we make a prediction. Making a prediction is when you predict or you guess what you think is going to happen next in the story based on what you've read so far. So what do you think Clifford and Cleo might be thinking when they look at that big, nice, crunchy pile of leaves? Do you think that Clifford and Cleo are going to have good self-control and do what they promised and not jump in the leaves? Or do you think that they might not be able to stand it anymore and jump in the leaves? Let's read and find out if your guess was correct. We could jump in carefully so we don't mess it up, said Cleo. Yes, we could, said Clifford. Then let's jump, said Cleo. Cleo and Clifford ran to the pile and jumped in with a big crunch. The leaves flew. A strong wind blew them everywhere. Oh no, said Clifford. Clifford and Cleo chased T-Bone's leaves. One leaf was on a weather vane. Another leaf was under the mail truck. Cleo and Clifford found a leaf on a swing in the playground. They found a leaf on some french fries. Clifford and Cleo found every one of the missing leaves. This is a great leaf pile, said Clifford. I can't wait to hear the noise it makes, said Cleo. We could jump in, Clifford said. But we won't, they said together. But T-Bone came back, and his pile looked even bigger and better than before. Let's stop there again with our bookmark and make another prediction. Did you predict or guess that they were going to find all the leaves and make the pile again? If you did, good job. Well, now we're at a part of the story where T-Bone's returned. And do you think that Clifford and Cleo will tell T-Bone what happened? Or do you think they'll let him look at the pile and they could probably get away with never telling them, right? What do you think would be the best thing to do? Pretend they never did it or tell them the truth? Let's find out if your prediction is correct. T-Bone came back and his pile looked even bigger and better than before. Thank you for watching my leaves, he said to Clifford. I want you to be the first to jump in. We must tell you the truth. We already jumped into your pile. All the leaves flew away, Clifford said, but Cleo and I got them back. I'm sorry, T-Bone. I'm glad you told me the truth, said T-Bone. I still want you to jump in first. So Clifford jumped in with a big crunch. Then Cleo and T-Bone jumped in, crunch, crunch, and the three friends enjoyed the rest of the beautiful fall day. What a great story. I love that Clifford and Cleo did the right thing by being honest with Theo, right? It makes you feel good inside when you're honest. It's always the best choice. When you're honest inside, it helps you to glow like a luminary. And we got to practice using a bookmark. So now you know how they work and how handy they come in. Maybe you can make one yourself. I sure had a lot of fun learning about the four seasons with you today. Maybe you can say them with me one last time. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. You know, there's a lot of science to tell us what the season is, but one of the easiest way to tell is to look out at the trees. Now we know how the earth affects the weather and the trees and why the leaves fall off and show us those hidden colors underneath. We had a lot of fun being silly together and making crafts and hearing some great stories and sharing those with our friends, especially you at home. 
Well, I'm going to meet you back here one last time when it's dark and I'm going to share these luminaries with you and so you can see how they really glow. Aren't they beautiful? Luminaries. They glow from the inside out just like you do at home. I hope you will join us again and until then I hope that you keep falling for leaves, reading, learning, and watching us at WQLN because we bring learning to life with you. Check it out. Bye-bye.